Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. I just got to say the love, the love that I've felt uh, coming into this night, it's so profound. I, I love that we have a Love known, wanted, needed. There's the DNA in me. <laughs> and, 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 you know, this last season for us, more than ever, we've just felt in this house loved, known, wanted, and needed. And that's for all of us here tonight. As Dr. Matt said, I, I want to share the journey that we've been on a little bit because it has been a journey of freedom. It has been a journey of... of of struggle, of battle, but pressing in. And, and he said that there are various degrees, there are levels of freedom that we walk in. And, and tonight's gonna be, I believe, a, an unveiling of a new level that each one of us in this house, if we will press in, are gonna go to. My expectation for tonight is that each and every person under the sound of my voice is gonna experience a new level of freedom in this house. Because God is projecting us into 2024, not to bring, not to bring the patterns and the cycles and the same things that we've carried throughout the past uh, year 23, but He's gonna bring something new. This is the year of 2020 more, 2020 more. But for the more to come, I believe that, there, that freedom is attached to that. And so what an honor to be able to to, to preach tonight around freedom, Freedom Wednesday. The Word says that where the Spirit of the Lord Jesus is, there's freedom. And I tell you tonight, in this place, in this atmosphere, there's been a stirring of the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we honour Him. Firstly, I want to honour our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you just, with me, lift up a shout of praise, honour the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the champion of heaven, the one who overcame, the one who died, the one who was buried, and the one who rose again. Our champion, we honor you, Jesus. We give you praise in this place. Come on. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And what, what to say about our amazing campus pastors? I, I here I stand, so thank you. Um, you guys are just incredible. I actually have notes in front of me, I should have a peek. But um, just incredible uh, leaders, incredible disciple, disciples and disciple makers, incredible multipliers. And um, you're tough, but, <laughs> but in the most respectable way, it, uh, just this last year for us has been one of such profound development, but, but to, to, to be so loved and believed in. And you guys see with spiritual eyes. And that's just so uh, incredibly beautiful about this house is that when you come in, you know, you can bring all of the knowledge that you have. You can bring all of, all of the uh, relational equity that you have and all of your past experience. But, but there's something beautiful about this house where leadership and, 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 and those of us in the house are able to see because we're, because we're walking in the Spirit, we're able to see with spiritual eyes that we don't look at things according to the flesh, but we look according to the, the Spirit, and, and, and the Spirit will highlight the things, and you guys are brilliant at bringing the gold out. It's not, you know, some people come in, they have all this calling on their life, but to develop that, and I feel profoundly developed, so thank you, and I know that there's developing to come. Amazing, and of course, I want to honor our, 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 our lead pastors, Pastor Jürgen and Pastor Leanne Matesius. Just incredible, incredible pastors. I want to, I want to honour their yes, their yes, to come from the land down under. I'm very familiar with that place, as you, you might hear, in my accent. Um, but to come and then and then to, to have the faith to begin a church, and then continue a church that's fresh, that's real, and that's powerful. How many of us know that we need more fresh? real, powerful churches in this nation, on this globe today. 
And I, I want to honor my beautiful bride, Heather. Yeah. Uh, to, to know Heather is to love Heather. And I, I love you deeply. Um, she's, she champions me. And uh, she knows a lot of things before I even ever find out and know. Um, she'll hear things from God and tell, babe, God's already told me that. The Holy Spirit has shown me. Sometimes I'm like, God, why don't you tell me these things? And God says, well, I did. Didn't you hear a thing that she just said? <laughs> she, she, she just walks in the Spirit. She's profoundly uh, powerful. And uh, tonight... By the way, worship band, thank you very much. You don't, don't, don't go for too long. <laughs> Come back out soon, but thank you. That beautiful song, Flood the Earth, Flood the Earth. Tonight I want to speak about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. In fact, the title of my message tonight is Your Kingdom Come. Your Kingdom Come. I have three points that I want to share tonight, and I'm going to hopefully get through all three of them and get to them. Uh, The three points I want to share, just so you know, the kingdom of heaven is now. The kingdom of heaven is ours. And the kingdom of heaven, I wanted to say is power because it rhymed really well. It just kind of flowed. But but, but, but more to what I feel God was putting in my heart is that the kingdom of heaven is order and authority. And so we're getting freedom tonight. We're going to be looking at, at, at the kingdom of heaven, getting into the flow of the kingdom But uh, I'm believing, like I said, for a powerful encounter for each one of us tonight, all right? So I'd have to say that less than 10 years ago, I I would have been the most unlikely person to be standing on this stage and sharing about freedom, about the breaking down of of, of spiritual uh, strongholds, the breaking off of spiritual chains, I, I didn't grow up in a, in a church organization that, that believed, and I'll be careful how I say this, because there's a lot of different people in the church, and we certainly love the Lord Jesus, but a church organization that believed in the power of God today, for today, okay? That we, we certainly recognize the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We recognize all of the, 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 the actions and the words of Jesus. But somehow we, we put that all on that time in the past for a certain reason. And that some of those reasons for perhaps like prophecy or miracles or the laying on of hands were needed in that time, but they weren't needed for today. Have you seen the world we're living in? Have you seen what's out there? More than ever today, we need the laying on of hands. More than ever today, we need the authority, the voice that will speak in the name of Jesus Christ and cast out the demonic, break down strongholds. We need that more than ever. But I was one of those people that believed that that had a a place in the past for the past and that here we are in this present time, we have the Bible so we don't need but didn't, isn't Paul, didn't Paul say that I come to you not, not with words of, of profound, but he said I come to you with a demonstration of power. Power. So that was one part of the belief system or the BS as we were talking about a few years. <laughs> no, no. So, yeah, say it like it is. Dr. Matt said just bring it tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it. So here we go. But, but listen to this. The other part, and this is what I really want to get to tonight, is that we believed that everything was for the future as well when it came to the promises of God, when it came to faith, when it came to breakthrough, when it came to life. We, we put it all towards the future when Jesus said that I come and give life and life to the fullest. We said, yes, absolutely, when we get to heaven. That you'll be free, free indeed. Of course we will be when we get to heaven. And we sing those songs in the sweet by and by. When we all get to heaven, I got a home in glory land. It's all these songs that we would sing about the time to come, but, but it wasn't for the now. How many of us know that the book of Hebrews says that now faith, now faith is the substance. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. 
that we walk in a now faith. But that wasn't the way that I was raised, and that's certainly not the way that I believed. My BS told me that everything was about the, the, the then faith, the faith that will come, the hope for the future, but not for the now. I'm here to tell you tonight that there is a now faith. So we, we walked in this way. My beautiful wife, my gosh, she was so young when we met. And uh, that's probably why we're still together. But she was, she was about 19 years old. This, we've been married for nearly 19 years old. 19 blessed years. Um, but I even remember you back then, babe. It was always this, because I went to Bible college seminary. Very thankful for the years that I spent studying. Um, you know, the Holy Spirit told me, Daniel, stop, stop kind of pushing those things away. I, I put them in your life for a reason. I believe that, that they're going to become evident in, 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 in what, we're, you know, what I'm speaking about tonight. But I'm thankful for the years that I spent. But, but you know, I remember my wife saying to me often, she said, babe, you know the Bible. You know the theology. You know all this. I don't know the Bible stuff. I don't, I don't know. I just go to church and, and we do lunch. And <laughs> if you know my wife, you'd, there's no way that that would compute with the woman that she is today. So in 2015, we had an amazing encounter in our, in, our, in our home, in our dining room with the Holy Spirit. And, and it pretty much blew everything off the table for me. I, you know, I always, I always describe it like this. I had this kind of like, you know those detective movies where they have that board and, and they have the big question mark in the center and they have all the photos around it and they're all kind of stringing it. That was me with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit was that question mark in the middle and there was all these verses around it and there's all these things that Jesus would say, if you have faith, you can move mountains. If you just believe, you know, and so all these things would be, but I could never put it all together. And what happened is that when the Holy Spirit came in, that, that, that beautiful uh, ordained evening in my house, the whole board blew off. And, and, and suddenly the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit began to put it back together. And I was like, man, wow. Look, I started reading the, I remember one of the first things I did was just read the gospels for months and months and months. And I kept saying to my wife, Jesus gets it. Jesus gets it. He understands this life of, he gets it. <laughs> But one of the most profound things I saw was my wife turn on. And no longer was she asking me the questions. Now she's, she's telling me what the Holy Spirit's speaking to her about. You know, there's a reason I'm bringing this up because she didn't have the, the kind of background that I had. She, she was far more in tune with Father. She was far more open to the things of the Spirit. Even before we were Spirit-filled, she had these clients that, that would talk to her. They came from Reading Church, Bethel, actually where Pastor Bill Johnson's going to be speaking, from the Bethel Church. And she was all about it. <laughs> she was like, man, oh, they're telling us about healings and, and about how God's doing these miraculous things. And I'll be like, oh, babe, no, no, that, that, that doesn't happen anymore. Let me just put you back. In you. Open up the Bible. It's not about emotions. It's not about these experiences. It's about standing on the Word of God. Because that, that was my filter, right? That was how I, I, I saw it. Even though the words were in front of me, my, be, my filter caused me to see it a certain way. I, I'm going to tell you tonight that many of us have a filter that caused us to see certain things, see ourselves in a certain way. God wants to shift that filter. He wants to shift that. He wants to break that down. He wants to open your eyes to see who you are in Christ Jesus. You know, one of the... One of the uh, I've thought about this because of going through seminary, but I thought, man, what are the, some of the greatest uh, truths, doctrinal truths that the enemy has, has covertly come in and, and, and removed from the teaching in our seminaries, in our schools, in a lot of our uh, churches? And I, and I thought about what they were, and I'll tell you what I believe they are. I believe that what he's removed, because you can have all the Bible, you can have all the worship, you can have all, but, but the power, the power, right? That's where the enemy is threatened. When you come against the kingdom of darkness, when you walk in the authority. So one of the things that, and I'm going to share about this, is authority. One of the things that the enemy is coming and skewered and removed from the church, from our teaching, our philosophy, is authority. I love that in this church, in this house, you hear it all. We'll sing songs that your authority rise in me. We teach on the authority of God, but that's one of those things out there in the church uh, that, that, that he has skewed and removed. Another, another is identity. 
And the third one is, I believe, because this, this is the stuff that really blew my mind to discover was spirit, soul, and body, how we are made up. So that, that's my opinion. That's some of the three things that I feel like the enemy has come in and really removed from the teaching and the understanding of the revelation of the church. And, and then you have no power. You have no power. You're like the army of Israel that rocks up to battle, all dressed fine, but no one's engaging. You know, over and over. But, uh, whew, where's my notes? So we were spirit-filled, and that led us into Awakened Church back in about 2016. And what I was saying about my wife is that she didn't have some of these predispositions. I saw her begin to, saw her begin to flourish in, in hearing from the Lord, laying hands. What, but, but me, I, I had so much in my head. And, and what, I, what I discovered was I was completely in this new revelation and understanding of the word. So I was, a, I was able to, to, to teach and to impart and to pray and to speak on behalf of others, believe for others, right? That was, that was the, I, I believe that you can prosper. I believe there's healing for you, Mike. I believe that you have the gift. I believe, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't truly believe it for myself or I wouldn't receive it for myself. There was, there was a blocking there's a, there was a, and I, this is what I want to say to you tonight is maybe as I'm speaking, you know, I could be speaking to all of you, some of you, but there's something that's just being blocked and you sense it. I love the, the beautiful tithe message. Uh, you know, the, the, there's a spirit of poverty that sometimes blocks our ability to think that we could ever succeed. Maybe you're, you're sensing, and I'm just praying this Holy Spirit that you're revealing in the hearts of the people here, wherever there may be patterns and cycles Areas that there's blockage. Because I believe the Holy Spirit's going to reveal those and we're going to release those areas. We're going to unblock those things. We're going to get into kingdom flow, kingdom flow, kingdom flow. But I had that blockage, so I, I, I know the experience. And I was doing pretty well. But you know, one thing I, I tell you, there was just, it kept coming up. It, it wasn't pretty. You know, it, it came up in, in striving. It came up in in. in needing to be recognized, you know, trying to prove things. It just kept coming up because there was that blockage towards, can I ever really be? And I'm thankful for leaders that saw it, <laughs> that didn't promote it. You know, for, for about six years before coming to San Marcos, we were at El Cajon campus. We were part of that and, and we were part of the, the plan of that campus and it was just a beautiful time of character development. I can tell you that much looking back. The amazing pastors, the, the, uh, Pastor Michael and Lisa Hunley, that, 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 you know, they saw things, they spoke into things. And, and I'm here to just be transparent, honest with you guys. It was, a, it was a journey of development. But I had these areas of, of, of blockage. So it, it, was, it was incredible because we, would, uh, we, we, we ministered, and we still do, uh, on, on Pathfinder Apprentice, uh, on the Pathfinder Apprentice team. Um, we, my wife's just so powerful in deliverance. I, I've seen so many people set free, delivered. I've seen the, the demons cast out, strongholds broken down. Um, we get to go from campus to campus and we minister to leaders. And then every uh, once a season, we do freedom nights for every single campus. So we'll have all of the apprentices come together. We'll teach around freedom, and then we will uh, pray over people and just see, see the shifting, see, the, see the, 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 the deliverance. And so remember, all these things I'm operating in, <laughs> easy for me to impart to others. But now some, of the, some of the things that I saw, I've got a quick list here, just because I, I, I know that if I... Say some of these, maybe the Holy Spirit will highlight them to you. Some of the things that I would see move and come out were spirits of fear, anxiety, anger, insecurity, bitterness, rejection, hate, lust, rebellion, pride, accusation, condemnation, addiction, vice, grief, poverty, doubt, greed, jealousy, religion, suicide, murder, infirmity, infertility, witchcraft, magic, occult, lies, false teaching, But all of those have a name. 
And there is a name that is above every single one of those. There's a name that's above all of that in your life tonight. It's the name of Jesus Christ. So we have freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. And guys, so we're talking about believers. We're seeing these things coming out of believers. This is not for the frothing at the mouth, half naked, you know, person running, you know, the demoniac. This is, this is coming out of believers. There's no, God doesn't condemn. God, God is not a God that condemns, that, that, that puts shame upon you. Jesus bore all of our shame upon the cross. All condemnation was put on Jesus Christ on the cross. So I'm not here to, you know, if you feel, a, if it, you're, you're not being judged tonight. These are, these are believers, these are leaders that, these, that, are, that are stepping in, pressing in for levels of freedom, seeing these kind of spirits being cast off and cast out. And I understood how this happened. I understood what was going on. I grew up in a, in, in, a, in a theology that said that where the Holy Spirit exists, then there can't be demonization. They can't exist together in the same place. I don't, I don't believe that's true anymore because the Bible doesn't teach that. I believe the Holy Spirit is present here among believers. But I also think that there are other spirits in this place. Pastor Jürgen said on, on Sunday so well, I mean, he, he, that, that the Old Testament is, is the, the picture uh, illustrated pretty much uh, in reality of the spiritual for us today in the New Testament. Does that make sense? I say that right. You, you, you get what I'm saying, right? And, and one of the greatest deliverance uh, pictures in the Old Testament is Egypt, uh, is Israel coming out of Egypt, that one, of the, one of the things that God commanded Israel to build in the wilderness was a tabernacle, right? And that tabernacle we know was in three parts. It, it later became the temple. Three parts, the outer court, the holy place, and the holy of holies. The Word of God shows us that in the holy of holies, the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah glory dwelled on the mercy seat. And only once a year could a high priest enter in to offer the blood on behalf of the nation. Once a year. And that high priest had to be clean. But in the other two parts, priests would enter into the holy place. They would do the showbread, light the candles. And in the outer court, anyone could come into the outer court. They could bring anything they wanted into the outer court. They could bring unclean animals, clean animals. May, and, and it was the priest's duty to say, not that, not that one. Yes, that's acceptable. So in the New Testament, Paul tells us that we are the temple. Our bodies are the temple of the living God. That we have an outer court. We have a holy place. And the Holy Spirit has brought us to life in the Spirit, in the holy of holies. That He dwells in that place. But we have a responsibility to inspect what's coming in, right? Inspect what's coming in. The Bible says that we are to take captive every thought and surrender it to Jesus. But we don't always know what's coming in. Yeah, the, the enemy is no respecter of innocence. So oftentimes he's going to get in when we're as children, when we go through traumatic experiences when things are done to us, when we felt rejection by others, when, when those we loved have, have disappointed, and the enemy's gonna find a foothold to get in, and he's gonna get in. And I'm not here to say it's your fault, but the enemy doesn't play fair. He comes to steal, steal kill, and destroy. So if you're wondering, how, how can I have demonization in my, in my life, in my world, things that are, that are blocking, things that are prohibiting, well, they, they, it exists in that place, in that area, and it affects your mind. The Bible says if we walk in the Spirit, we won't carry out the desires of the flesh. But if we walk according to the flesh, it leads to death. We're here to break off those spirits that have entangled, that have found footholds in your flesh tonight to break off the work of the enemy. This is where freedom is. This is freedom. This is freedom because when those things are broken off, the flow, we said flood the earth, flood the earth. We need to step into kingdom flow. That's step into kingdom. So here, here I go. I do have points and I have a very short amount of time. But your kingdom come. 
your kingdom come. God's kingdom is now. God's kingdom is now. In, in uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 2 to 4, the disciples asked Jesus how to pray. And Jesus said, our Father in heaven, and we all know, most of us would know, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is telling him, this is how you pray. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted, indebted to us. And don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Your kingdom come. Well, what does that look like? What does that look like? I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> Jesus comes into Nazareth. And it's his hometown. And he goes, into the, he goes into the temple. And there he's handed a, a scroll. And it, it, it's a scroll of Isaiah. What a coincidence. No, not a coincidence. And it, it, it says uh, in, in Luke chapter 4, and this is in 17 to 21, it says that he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he opened the book, he found, purpose, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight of the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closes the scroll and he says that the eyes of all of those in the room are fixed on him. And you know what he says? He says, this is fulfilled today. This is fulfilled today. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is fulfilled. The kingdom is now. What was he telling us about what is what the fulfillment of what? What is he telling us about the kingdom and of what was fulfilled? He said that it's good news to the poor. What's good news to the poor? That you don't have to be poor anymore. You don't have to be poor anymore because there's kingdom now. There's kingdom that's coming in. If you were pressed into kingdom, you're pressed into kingdom flow. He came to, he said, I'm, I'm here to heal the brokenhearted to set captives free, to give sight to the blind, to free the oppressed, to bring the year of the Lord's favour, to bring rest and provision to His church. Some of us, what is this Sabbath that we talk about? What's the Sabbath? Is it on a Sunday? Is it on a Saturday? But I want to tell you something that Jesus Christ is the, fulfill he is the Sabbath. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. He is our rest. It's not a day, it's a person. It's a per it's, and this is another message for another time, but, but Jesus Christ is, is the Sabbath. He's the one that has called us to be looking Hebrews 4 to come into that rest, to walk in this perpetual Sabbath where we're no longer living under curse. We're no longer pain, sweat, and toil, but we're under a flow, a kingdom flow that we are blessed. This is for you tonight. This is for you tonight. God's kingdom is ours. It's ours. In the Lord's Prayer, he goes on to say, and this is something I shared in men's prayer, but I, it's always worth saying over and over and over and over again. We've got to get it in us. But he says, give us this day our daily bread. You know, when I was growing up, we, we, had a, we had a little pamphlet in Australia called The Daily Bread, and you'd often find it in toilets or, or restrooms, and, 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 you know, it'd be this good little feel-good word that you'd be like, oh, great, what a great thought, and then, you know, walk away and probably forget it. But God showed me something, the Holy Spirit showed me something profoundly. It was when, it was when a, a Canaanite woman comes to Jesus, and she says to Jesus, Jesus, my daughter is possessed severely. Can you cast that demon out of my daughter. Now this was a foreign woman. And Jesus' reply to her was, do I take the bread of the children, the children's bread and give it to the dogs? I'm not getting into all of that part right now, but 
do I take the children's bread? He equated bread, the bread of the children to deliverance. He said in his prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Your portion is freedom tonight. Your portion tonight is healing. Your portion is breakthrough, the breaking of cycles and patterns. That is your portion. And I'm here to declare the enemy is not going to steal that portion any longer. That we stand in authority. That is your portion. David said that I, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and my cup overflows. No one's stealing from me. Now that's your portion. I didn't know it was my portion. Fully revelation until I had an encounter a couple of months ago with Pastor Mike Connell. In fact, an encounter with the Holy Spirit is a divine appointment. And uh, I thought it was for my wife, to be honest. I thought, you know, we're gonna go in and have a meeting. She's gonna get some deliverance, you know. Part of this meeting that was set, it was a privilege to be, uh, to have that time with him. But part of it was around another story that my wife uh, may share one day. But, but so I sat there and I, I thought a little bit about, you know, what some of my stuff was. And, and that was pretty much what came to mind. I think I remember sharing this with you out in the, in the foyer, Pastor Michaela, and I just said, I, I find it hard to believe that success is for me, personally, that the flow is for me, that, that kingdom is for me. I can preach it to others, but for me. But I didn't know if I'd get a chance to even say a word. So I, I sat in that room, I sat on that couch and, he took about three minutes on my wife and said, welcome to the warfare. And then he fixes his gaze on me and he says, what about you? I thought, okay, here's my thing. So I shared it with him. Remember, you know, I've, I've analyzed this for years now, my, my past, my raising, the, the, the areas of rejection. And you know, he was so gentle. So at that time, he was, at that moment, he was gentle. And he just said, he said, I, I, he agreed with some of these things. He said, that, that's exactly what a spirit, of, a spirit of rejection would do that. A spirit of religion would do that. And he was, you know, so I'm like, okay, so he, he, he's picking up what I'm putting down. So I see it all. So if I see it all, it can't be demonic because it's, it's very evident. You think about that. Yeah. So I, I, had it all, I had it all wrapped up in a package. I said, this is what my life looks like. This is what I'm dealing with. This is where I need some inner healing, some, some mindset shift. And if you can just, you know, you do what you do. So he says to me, I want you to write a couple letters. But he said, you know, and I, and I brought up a couple of things I never really had brought up before. But I did bring up my, my training in seminary and religion. And he came over, he said, before you go, before you, I, want to, I just want to pray for you. I'm like, oh, beautiful. We're going to pray together. He said, I want you to repeat after me. I can do that. So I'm sitting on this couch and he starts to pray. And he's leading me through a prayer. I'm repeating the things he's saying. And I think, okay, maybe I'm disappointing him a little bit. I do have some tears in my eyes. I'm feeling, you know, but, but you know, he's, and then suddenly he gets done praying in that way. <laughs> And he puts his hands on me. And he says, now in the office of the apostle. And he just began to go after every single spirit that I listed on there, including murder and torture and things of the past and religious and false beliefs. And, and I tell you, not to get too graphic, but I left that chair pretty quickly, not, not voluntarily, straight down onto the floor. And my wife has a whole other version of this because I don't. All I remember was trying to breathe. I'm not trying to scare anyone, but this is this is real. This is real, real stuff. I remember just trying to. I remember my, everything expanding, my head expanding, and he was just, bam, 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 and and it felt like waves after wave after wave, and I was and of things just leaving. Leaving, praise God, leaving, leaving. They were leaving, they were leaving under the authority of, of Jesus Christ. They couldn't stay. I just need to breathe. I can't breathe. Whoom, 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 just whoom. God, 
And there's, there's some graphic stuff. I won't say it here, but there's some stuff. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, you want me to? Look, I want you to come down for deliverance. I want you to come down to get some freedom tonight. It doesn't have, it might, everyone's got a different story. But, but I, 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 I was on my knees and at about round number two or the end of round two, I opened my eyes and all over the floor is blood. And so, so I don't know if this is blood covenants or what, it, but it's just blah. And, and I'm like, man, Pastor Becky's going to love this. I didn't have that thought at all at that moment. I just remember Pastor Mike Connell saying, just release, loose. And I hope this is, but anyway, this is, this is, you said go there. I'm going there. This is real. And I stood up after round three. And I remember standing and uh, there was this, there was this peace in the room, but I stood and I remember looking slightly in the mirror and I couldn't recognize my face. So I looked away. And I think I, said, thank you. I don't even remember. I just walked out of the room. And I think I kind of just walked through the foyer and walked out to the car. I don't even know. Heather's probably stopping talking to a million people, but I, I was just walking. And I sat in the car in the passenger seat. <laughs> I just thought, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm rocked and I'm shocked. Eventually, Heather sits down next to me and the only, thing, the only thing I can say to her, it's real. It's real. It's real. The presence of the demonic in the Christian's life, it, it, it can be real. It's real. But the power and the authority of Jesus Christ to cast it out is real. It's real. It's for me. It's for you. Don't shy away. Don't let the enemy tell you that it's not for you tonight. Don't stay back when you should be coming forward. I want people to come down the altar because freedom and healing is for you. It's real. It's real. Whew. Kingdom of God is a kingdom of order and authority. And God wants to reorder things in our lives tonight. And you guys can stay standing if you like. I mean, we're, we're gonna wrap up here. I wanna do some prayer. I wanna pray for people tonight. But for the 2020 more, I believe that, that in order for the more to come, God is ordering things in our lives. It's a kingdom of order, authority, I don't know what you think about when you hear order. But I think that order is, is found in, in, like in Ephesians chapter 1 where it says that everything is under the feet of Jesus Christ. And then it says, it says that we are, I mean, I'll read it because it says it better than I can say it. But I want you to catch this because this is really important. It says in Ephesians 1, 20 to 23, and I know I said number two, uh, chapter two, so if you have one, it says, he worked in Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. If everything's under Jesus' feet and we're part of His body, where are His feet? Everything is under. So when I talk about order tonight, we want to get things back in order. I'm talking about authority. I'm talking about things that have been above your world, above your life, above over you, that shouldn't be over you, that God is calling us to put them back into order tonight because He wants us to walk into 2024 as a 2020 more. So we're going to pray tonight. And I think the first things first, for, for, for some in here tonight, we, the first thing that's out of order is our relationship with the Father God. Maybe you've never 
come to peace with God. Maybe you've never stepped into that life of freedom. Maybe everything looks good on the outside, but inside you know that it's all out of order. Well, the good news is that tonight God wants to bring it into order. He wants to fix the broken. He wants to mend the wounds. He wants to restore relationship first with Him. And then the relationships in your world. But if that's you tonight, and I just feel to to quickly do this, first step of freedom is to come into relationship with your Father God. If, If things aren't in order in that area tonight, and you just feel that it's time, I I believe it's time. In fact, let's not even go with feelings. Let's just know that you have a God that loves you, a God that wants to reorder things in your life. And I'm gonna ask you right now, if you wanna get that in order, would you just raise your hand in this place? I wanna pray for you. I wanna pray for you. Jesus Christ loves you. He gave His life and rose again that that He can bring order back into your world. If that's you tonight, raise your hand. See, yeah, I see those hands. Beautiful. One, two, look at that. Come on. Beautiful. Before we, before we get into praying for freedom, deliverance, I, I, I want to just ask that you, church, everyone together would repeat after me. I want to pray over these beautiful people that raise their hands right now. So just repeat, Heavenly Father, oh, I thank you so much that you're a God of order. I thank you for Jesus Christ, that He came, He died, was buried and rose again. And I confess Him as the Lord of my life. So God, will you wash away my sins and come abide in my life? Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. So... Beautiful, congratulations. So we have a response lounge over here. If, you, if you're standing next to someone that raised their hands, if you raise your hand, come down. We have people that would love to give you a book, a following Jesus, a Bible, and pray over you. And we're excited for the beginning of a new journey of freedom in your life tonight. Amen, come on. Beautiful. But so, so I wanna, I wanna lead in an exercise really for all of us because it's so imperative that we walk in, that we we forgive. Without forgiveness, there's no freedom. So what I wanna do is I wanna lead in the exercise of, of, of forgiveness and then I'm gonna start calling people down. We have an amazing ministry team that's gonna, they're ready tonight. They're gonna be lining up at the altar But once we do this exercise of forgiveness, I wanna begin to invite people to come down because I believe that God is, there's an encounter down here waiting for each and every one of us. So if you'd close your eyes, let's begin this. Let's begin, let's get get these first necessary things in place. So I want you to picture in your mind, picture in your mind right now, you're stepping into the throne room of God. And, and the throne is before you. And your Father's seated on that throne. And now I want you in your mind's eye to look to your left and to your right. And to, uh, what, I, what I want you to see there is any person or any persons that have ever hurt you, that have ever you felt rejection from, that have wronged you. It could have been back when you were a child. It could have been as recent as this week. Now I want you to picture in your mind's eye that you are walking towards the throne room of grace, the throne of grace. And each person is walking right along with you. And now you come and you stand 
at the throne. Now if you repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for forgiving me. And now I release the power of unforgiveness and the hold that the devil has had on my life through unforgiveness. And I choose to forgive. And then I want you to begin to name, maybe out loud, maybe in your heart, but to begin to name those people that have hurt you, that have wronged you. Just release them right now. Release the power that that unforgiveness has held over your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now I want you to take a step back and you begin to leave that throne. And you're walking out. And you're leaving each one of those people at the throne of God for Him to deal with. They're not your problem anymore. They don't have power over you anymore. You've released and you walk away. Who feels lighter? Who feels like this? Yeah, come on. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Now I'm going to pray and you can pray after me or you can just agree that amen. But God, I break every inner vow, every inner vow, every, every, every agreement that we've made with the enemy, even as children, as innocents, that I will never be, that I am not, that I cannot. I break every inner vow. I break every, every, uh, every defiling attachment right now, every, every area that the enemy has, has come in to take hold, to take stronghold, to get rooted into our lives, I break defiling attachments. I break soul ties in the name of Jesus Christ in this place. Beautiful. Yeah, we break the power of the enemy. We break the power of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, well, I'm, it's open. We're opening up the altars, so freedom is for you. I want you to come forward. We're going to begin to, to get freedom, healing. We have forgiveness. We break and vow, so would you come forward? Freedom is for you tonight. Freedom is for you tonight. Heavenly Father, I break off every spirit of accusation. I break off every spirit of unworthiness. I break off every spirit of lies, every false spirit in this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Release your people. Let them come and fill the altar. Let them come and fill this place. Come on, freedom is tonight. Come on. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.